Hello everyone and welcome to the AI and Climate Change Workshop. This workshop is organized by me, Lynn Kark, and by Nikola Milojevic Dupont. And um, it will take place this afternoon and tomorrow morning. And we're going to use this um, first 25 minutes to give an overview over the track and also to have the poster presenters give one minute talks. And I'm going to start us off, um, since we are at a machine learning conference, I'm going to start us off with um, providing some basic facts about climate change and climate change research. So um, people who work on climate change problems can be grouped in, in these three different approaches. So there's climate science, which is concerned with detecting, modeling and forecasting the variability and changes in the climate. Um, then there's adaptation, which is concerned with um, creating robustness and resilience of society to the effects of climate change. And then there's mitigation, um, which is concerned with reducing greenhouse gas emissions to prevent further warming. But what do we actually know about climate change? And um, a good place to look at um, the facts around climate change is the other reports by the International Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. And I'm going to um, walk us through a plot of one of their more recent reports um, to introduce three key facts about climate change. Um, this is the plot. Um, I'm going to disentangle it a little bit. So um, the first point is the climate is already warming. And this is due to human activities and in particular CO2 emissions. And um, this plot shows um, the temperature increase with respect to pre-industrial levels. So zero on the y-axis here is um, <clears throat> the temperature, the mean global temperature before we started burning fossil fuels. And um, you can see that by now, actually, um, the climate has warmed by about one degree. And if the, if the trend continues, um, we will see a lot more warming pretty soon. Um, the next point is that um, CO2 emissions need to be reduced to avert further warming. And this plot here shows the global CO2 emissions since 1970. And um, it also shows two decarbonization scenarios um, to reach to um, have global net zero carbon emissions. And, <clears throat> and these scenarios correspond to a warming that's around 1.5 degrees. So um, this one corresponds to this trajectory and um, the gray one corresponds to this tra trajectory. So from this, we can also see the faster we um, reduce the greenhouse gas emissions, the more likely it is we're going to stay within 1.5 degrees warming. And this is necessary um, to have less likelihood of catastrophic changes in the climate. And um, then there's one further point here that um, we not only need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, uh, not only need to reduce CO2 emissions, but also other greenhouse gases, for example, methane. Um, so let's look at where um, CO2 emissions come from. So this plot here shows the global CO2 emissions um, since 1850, and um, the light part shows the emissions from land use, and the dark part is the, are the emissions from fossil fuel use and <coughs> industry. And we see that um, they've been increasing quite a bit. Um, and I have another plot here that shows where in the economy those emissions come from globally. And um, the red part here corresponds to electricity generation. Then we have transportation in orange, also pretty large share, and their buildings and other industry activities. And what this plot also highlights are those areas that are hard to decarbonize. That means we have um, little technological solutions for these kind of um, shares of the emissions. And so machine learning has been driving a lot of industries. So you may ask, um, how can machine learning help to improve um, <clears throat> those decarbonization strategies to reduce emissions? And Nicola and I are part of a team of researchers that has um, written an overview over how machine learning comes in um, for climate change mitigation and adaptation. And we've published this last year in um, June. And um, from this 
from this um, work, we learned that machine learning is a powerful tool and there are recurring themes how machine learning can come in. So for example, it can help um, accelerate experimentation. So to develop better batteries, um, it can help with forecasting, for example, to integrate renewables on the grid. Um, <clears throat> it can provide data, um, for example, to policymakers, um, which are really essential for climate mitigation and adaptation strategies, so they can make better and informed decisions. Related to that, um, a re remote sensing can be improved with machine learning and feed into this data generation. Um, <clears throat> machine learning can also be used for accelerating um, simulations and for optimizing systems. And it can also help with predictive maintenance of low carbon infrastructure. But what also needs to be kept in mind is that machine learning by no means is a silver bullet. So it's really important that machine learning researchers interested in this topic work together with domain researchers um, who really understand the problem <coughs> and other stakeholders, who, um, maybe from the public sector who understand the problem. And this is necessary for targeting meaningful problems, for um, targeted, targeting it in the right way, so not to oversimplify it or overcomplicate it, to recognize risks early and to guide deployment of these solutions. So we developed this roadmap for machine learning researchers interested in the topic, um, which is essentially um, starts off with learn and identify where your skills are most useful, then find collaborators and listen to those and um, in the end, ensure that your solution is deployed and deployable, because then it will have an impact on the climate. And um, we realized that we are in a unique position to connect domain researchers with machine learning researchers. Um, so a number of our section authors and additional people um, got together to found this um, organization called Climate Change AI, um, which, um, where we have the mission to um, facilitate this type of work at the intersection of machine learning and climate change domains. <clears throat> and you can find us on this website, climatechange.ai. And um, what we've been doing is organize physical meetups such as this one. And we went at, um, at ICML and Europe's and also COP25. And we also provide resources on the website. And um, what we have also done is um, launch a forum for um, people to connect online and find collaborators. So you can sign up for this on our website as well. And um, <clears throat> we will have another upcoming workshop in April at iClear, which will take place in Ethiopia. So if you're interested in submitting your work, um, this, the call for papers is still open. Um, it's due very soon on February 4th. And you can find the submission link on our website as well. So um, with this, I will pass over to Nicola to introduce today's schedule. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> um, so let's now dive uh, into the program of this track on AI and climate change. Um, so the track will take place um, this afternoon and tomorrow morning, um, and we will have four sessions um, that aim to cover different uh, areas that are important to tackle climate change. Um, and there will also be a joint poster session with the other uh, tracks um, the, this evening. Uh, and so we will have 20 minute and eight minute long talks and a panel discussion will uh, close the track tomorrow. And so now we'll go uh, through uh, quickly through which, uh, each session one by one. So uh, right after this introduction, um, the, um, we will talk about machine learning in climate science and relatively in adaptation st studies. Um, so this uh, session will showcase uh, studies that you uh, use uh, climate data such as uh, temperature or precipitation data or also data on natural and uh, human systems that are influenced by climate. Uh, after this, we'll have a 30 minute uh, coffee break and we'll reconvene at uh, 3.30 uh, for the second session on, of the day on climate policy. Um, so policy is very important, uh, both for adaptation and mitigation, because um, um, it implies taking often very complex decisions and we'll see that machine learning can help better decision making for uh, climate policies. 
And uh, next, um, we'll have so the poster session uh, from five uh, for two hours in the lobby uh, just outside. And um, so our posters are all the way next to the window and uh, there will be light food and uh, drinks served. So that's all for today. Tomorrow, uh, we start again at nine um, uh, for the session on climate change mitigation. So which is really how to reduce greenhouse gases emissions in order to prevent climate change to worsen. Um, and so we'll have a series of talks that will show the value of machine learning to in generating precious data that can help us understand where emissions come from and uh, what can we do to reduce them. Um, after that, we take another break before the last session. Um, which will focus on going from an ML application to achieving real-world climate action. Um, and so we think that this session is really important because uh, much of the work currently proposed is at the stage of a proof of concept. And for this solution to have an impact, uh, they need to be deployed, deployed at scale. So, so in this session, we'll talk about the importance of co-creating solutions by partnering with stakeholders that know very well the problems. And we'll discuss the role of governance in shaping a full life cycle of uh, ML solutions. And um, we'll have a panel discussions um, to close the track and to get the thoughts of some of our invited speakers on how to achieve uh, effective climate action with machine learning. Um, and so now we'll have uh, some of the poster presenters that will come to uh, quickly introduce uh, the, the posters. Uh, and the first one is Victor Christophe. 